What's going on ladies and gents? This is Mento and I'm here to talk about some of the lesser known functionalities of the Steam controller. Because there's actually a bunch of really nifty things that a lot of people don't know about. Heck, even I didn't know about it at first. Um, what I'm going to talk about primarily is the motion control, the dual trigger functions, the mode shifting function, as well as modifying your trackpad to be a touch menu and a scroll wheel. So first and foremost, the, one of the bigger aspects about the functions, or the biggest function of them all, is the motion control. So motion control is pretty cool in that you pretty much just move the controller to aim wherever you need to or to move uh, a specific function. For me, I have it to move my mouse. Um, if, in order to actually access it, you gotta go to the controller configuration menu, and then it's actually this middle menu over here. Um, you enable it, and then you can actually use uh, whatever, um, you can have it on however you like. You can have it always on, you can have it activate on right pad touch, which is what I do, left pad, or whatever you want. Um, the nice thing too is you have all these customization options where you can increase the sensitivity, decrease the sensitivity, um, basically just make it to your liking. So it's really cool because um, I like it for trying to go for precise aiming. Um, usually with my right trackpad as my, my, my camera movement, it's a little sporadic because um, I kind of want a high sensitivity on the trackpad so I can move wherever I need to. But for aiming, it's a little uh, janky, I guess. So with the uh, motion control, I can essentially... Let me select a uh, weapon real quick. Oops. Um, say I'm like moving around and I need to really aim for something. So I use this to just move the camera around in the like general vicinity. And I can use motion tracking to actually uh, fine tune and aim for whatever I need to. So it really works well, and I think it's a pretty nifty function. The cool thing is with the motion control, there's also a gyro function. So I actually have um, a gyro for leaning left and right. Um, it's pretty. I like it. Uh, you can assign the function button, the the function of the button, however you want. But because this is dishonored, I just wanted to go with the flow and just emulate actual leaning. Plus, it's cool if you actually lean, and you can also look around whenever you need to. So the next function I want to talk about is the dual trigger functions on each of the triggers. And as its name implies, there are two specific functions that you can do with it. One is a soft pull action, which is by tapping on the trigger lightly. The other is a hard pull action, which you pull the trigger very hard. So for Dishonored, I actually have it as my, my, light, my soft pull trigger is to block, and my hard pull trigger is to attack. So I really like this specific function because it offers a lot more options to put on the other triggers as well. So, well, with Dishonored, the left trigger technically is to uh, use your powers, but the soft trigger pull action can be used for something else, which I'll explain in a bit, because I actually have it on a uh, mode shift. Um, it's really interesting to get used to, too, but again, it's something that's really hard to grasp at first because we're so used to just one functionality on each of the triggers. The nice thing too though is that when you configure it, you can also set how far you want the trigger to pull or how like the range in which the soft trigger pull action occurs. So you can increase the point in which it does so, you can increase the range in which it starts or the range in which it ends. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of options for you to choose from so you can really get familiar with these controls. So the next function I want to talk about is what's known as mode shifting. And mode shifting allows you to press and hold a certain button and it actually changes the function of another button on the controller. So let's take for example that my left trackpad is a numerical pad at the moment, which is a touch menu, but I'll explain that in a bit. Um, I, have a, I have a mode shift for it by pressing the left uh, soft pull trigger action. So when I press and hold it and I go back to the left uh, trackpad, it actually turns into a scroll wheel. So that way I can just select weapons by scrolling up and down. And if I release it, it goes back to the numerical pad. So again, it's really cool because you have a lot more options for buttons to add to. You can, let's say for example, you want to use the four face buttons as items. By using a, a mode shift, you can also increase that to eight buttons instead of four. So the last two functions I wanna talk about are the touch menu and scroll wheel capabilities that you can add to either of the touchpads. So as you saw earlier, I, have cur I currently have a numerical touch menu to the left touchpad. And so this is just meant to emulate the actual numerical keys on the keyboard. So if I were to select one right now, it'd be basically just like selecting a weapon. Um, and this is really good for games that obviously require a lot of items, a lot of weapons to choose from. 
Um, with Dishonored, I do still have the uh, radio wheel to select some of my abilities, but using this in conjunction with the numerical pad makes me allows me to quick swap uh, uh, items and abilities to specific functions that I want. So if, let's say I want to put blink on one, I just do that, and one is set to my blink. So really ease of access there too. Um, I also use the uh, touch menu on the right uh, touchpad as well. I actually have it for my uh, mana and health options. However, I am I am using this one a little differently because I don't have um, what what with the left trackpad. I actually have it set to touch and then click to access the buttons. With the right, I actually have it mode shift so that I need to double tap the buttons. So you'll probably see my health go up right now. So if I double click, my health just went up, and if I double click the bottom, my mana goes up. In order to actually do that, so. You, like I said, you need to mode shift it. Um, I have it set on uh, mode shifting for the right trackpad on the touch menu. And so I'm not sure if it's meant to do that, but as far as I can tell, that's how it works. But it's really good. And the nice thing too is if you want to remove, say, some of the visual noise from the menus, you can actually reduce the opacity. And if let's say you're, you get familiar with where the numbers are, you can turn it off completely and you can just gain access to either of the elixirs. So there you didn't see the menu pop up, but I was able to refill my health. And finally, emulating the scroll wheel is relatively simple. I just have mine on shift mode, so all you have to do is set your scroll wheel to function on one of the other on one of the trackpads, and all you have to do is rotate the um, trackpad clockwise and counterclockwise. So this is nice because you have, for Dishonored at least, you can just switch between your weapons on the fly instead of having to memorize, say, like a numerical pad, so in case you forget. Um, it's also good, say, for example, if in some games you want to zoom with the scroll wheel for sniper rifles or certain things. So there's that added functionality and that added um, benefit of just having it mapped somewhere else. So that's pretty much it, guys. I hope this information helps you a bit in determining like different functions for your Steam controller. Um, I'll, give, I'll actually put a link in the description about this specific functiona functionality for Dishonored because it does utilize, I want to say, util almost all the functionalities that the Steam controller is capable of. But thanks for watching, guys. I will see you all next time.